Hello, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to uh, discuss about protocols. That's my new video on protocols, a basic uh, idea about the protocol. Okay, what are protocols? Okay, so here, protocols can be defined as instruction set of rules for communication. Right, instruction set of rules for communication means here we are having some statements, okay, for communication. That means what is a communication? Communication means data transfer, right? So from one device to another device, we are transferring data. So when we transfer data, another device should understand its language. So some statements will be there. Okay, that we need to. Uh, uh, create okay, so we are writing means uh, generally so create the plan. Now, <clears throat> so these uh, three programs are also known as communication drivers, right? So both the devices should have a similar protocol. Then only we can communicate. If it is having different uh, protocols, it's very difficult to communicate. So we cannot even communicate these devices. So that's why for each protocol, there are different instruction set of rules are there. Okay. So in this case, uh, we are having different types of protocols, like uh, one of that is basic protocol that is RS232. Right. I think you heard about this 232 communication only. Whereas RS stands for recommended standard. And here you can see 232. Here, in this case, it is using three wires okay, for communication purpose. So yes. you can say a three four cable. Okay. In that we are having three wires. Okay, so in a single wire. You can use these three wires for communication. So it's just we need a wire or uh, we need some connectors, right? So as you have seen, some connectors, uh, a nine-pin connector in a D-shape one on the PC and other one on the PLC, right? So nine pin connectors. So out of these nine pins, so in this uh, pin numbers, right, uh, they are numbered like this, one to nine, at PC and as well as on the PLC end. So at pin number two, it is for receiving, pin number three is for transmitting, right? So when you are transmitting data or receiving data from one end to another end, Okay, so here this out is communicating from PCN. If data is transferred to PLC, this is going to receive at PLC end at pin number two. From three to two again. So that's why it is known as two, three, two. Okay, so your data should, will not uh, should not lose. Okay, in between, so that for that we are having some rounding. Okay. So the last pin, pin number five, is for ground. Okay. This is about two three two communication. Whereas this having a baud rate. Baud rate means like uh, at what speed? Okay, it can transfer data. So you see, here you can see the minimum baud rate is 9.6 kbps. Kbps stands for kilo bits per second. It is bits per second, not bytes, but it is a bits per second. So maximum it can go up to 19.2 kbps. Okay. For this RS232. And the distance maximum we can cover is up to 50 meters of distance using RS232 communication. So nowadays it is very less. And uh, data uh, transfer rate is also less. Right, using RS232 communication. In that, we are having different uh, variations again RS232C type, okay, uh, <clears throat> with different features, okay, for how to do something, okay, different model uh, protocols have been introduced, okay. So, we for, go forward for the next uh, protocol that is RS485. It is 5 In this case, we are using two-wire communication with shielding. 
Okay, in 222 there is a 3 wires, but here in this core is 5, only 2 wires with shielding. So what is the purpose of shielding? Here it is uh, <coughs> grounding, okay, we can say a grounding of external signals, okay, which is disturbing your main signals, okay, which is passing through your cable, right. So, I think if you have seen a copy bus cable, right? So, this is a copy bus cable. The violet color cable will be there. In that, it is having two wires. One is red and one is green. Okay. So, in this, uh, green color is called data A. And red one is called data B. Okay. And this coating. Okay. This is silver coating on those two wires. That is called Okay, that is grounded with your coffee bus connector. If there is an external signals, like uh, there is uh, you are taking this cable through some electrical pole or nearby any electrical wires, so there will be some EMF, right? So EMF stands for electromagnetic field. So that will be disturbing your signal. Right? So to ground those signals, okay, the shielding is provided. So that your data can travel at longer distance. If you compare with 232, it is going up to uh, say 50 meters, right? Whereas in 485 can go further. Okay. There's an advantage here using 485. So it is uh, <clears throat> having a fan shaking uh here yeah, uh, that is you can see. Uh, for hand setting purpose, we are sorting these two pins here, pin number 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 are sorted at the uh, PLCI. Okay. So, here, this uh, sorting is done for the hand set configuration. What is, the, uh, what is hand set? It means, uh, once the data is transferring to another end, okay, so it has to confirm that I received data, then it has to give the signal. The signal it has to give back, right? So for that purpose, uh, we are sorting here these two things. Generally, these are on the uh, <coughs> uh, available okay, these connectors, MPI, okay, or performance connectors, which are already available, okay. So these are the internal circuit. Now, the baud rate here. The baud rate is maximum 12 Mbps on this 4 at 5. And the distance, it can go up to 1 kilometer. Okay, without any uh, additional repeater or a device. Okay, so maximum distance is 1 kilometer or you can say 1000 meters. Right. If you compare with 232, which is having the maximum distance of only 50 meters, right? Whereas 485 is having much longer distance compared to 232. This there is one of the advantages, right? And not only uh, a single module, you can add multiple modules on this 485, whereas on RS232, you can add only one node, okay? One node or uh, means two devices only you can communicate here <coughs> with the main device. Now, you can see we are some connector types. Uh, these are your copy bus connectors. So, there is one uh, type here which is having a connector here, line pin connector. Okay. Only at one side. Whereas uh, you can see it's one side connector and uh, other type of connectors, you can see there are two sides. You are having this nine pin connectors here, at one at front and another one at back side of this. So these connectors you can use and connect it over here at the back of this connector and you can uh, extend the communication or the connection here using copy bus. Now, in these connectors, you can see there are some arrows here at the bottom. Okay, up and down. Here also you can see one is uh, showing in and one is showing out. These are uh, the way for connecting your wires 
like a table that it was table which is having two ones right so in this you can see a1 b1 a2 b2 here you can see it is visible there are four pins here for the four slots you can see in this table so i will disconnect it sorry a1 b1 a2 b2 so two wires are connected here a1 and b1 green and red again green and red so here if I want to continue the signal, means I want to add more uh, modules on the same network. Okay, I can use this A to B two connection. So one cable will go from this side, and other cable you can take out from here. Okay, there is one more uh, slot available here. Okay, from there you can take out the cable. Okay, and here you can see there is a red switch here okay there is a tip switch here red color here it is showing off and here it is showing on okay means if you want to continue the signal or not means if i want to break the signal means if i don't want to uh, continue the signal further after this connector after this module okay i can simply terminate it using these switches okay so here you can see on this connector, you will see one diagram here. It's showing on or off condition. If it is on, that means if the switch is on, means it is terminating. If the switch is off, means it is continuing, means it is connected. Okay, so this is how this uh, signals are. Means uh, this switch is used for the continuous communication. <clears throat> okay. Here also on this connector, you can see green, red, green, and red, right? So A1, B1, A2, B2 for extension. Okay. Now, this is our connector types in coffee bus we are using. So we next we come to the next protocol that is RJ45, which is your RJ stands for recommended jack. Here we are having Ethernet connector. Okay, signal has provided uh, their own cable. Okay, means it's a green in color. Okay, their own protocol. Okay, their launch. Okay, in this way, I'm a separate connector, uh, which is uh, like uh, you can say according to the atmosphere in industrial area. You cannot use a normal Ethernet cable, right? Which is very delicate. Whereas uh, in industrial areas, we are having a very rough and hard atmosphere, right? So there, we cannot use the normal cable. So Siemens has uh, provided one Ethernet cable with uh, shielding <coughs> here, so that uh, your data will not lose, as well as you can tra uh, transfer the data for the longer distances using this RJ45. In this, you can see this have different types of shielding here. Okay. Provide any optional disturbance. So, and your data can travel longer distance. Now, here, the maximum baud rate will be like 100 Mbps, uh, or it can be configured more than that also. Okay, more than 100. Uh, now it is. I have higher speeds. You can really use 100 and Mbps. Okay. Using switches, you can uh, extend the distance in this internet. Now, this is about the basic idea about uh, different protocols available for communication. So, we discuss about multi point interface, that is MPI. MPS stands for multi point interface. So, here in this case, we are using RS485, which is also a, uh, <coughs> it's a which is also an internal or a, you can say electrical interface of your coffee bus, right? So, here it supports 32 nodes or stations. 32 nodes or stations, nodes means different points, okay? So different stations you can have. So from uh, zero to 31 stations you can have. 
for example we can see from pc to plc right so when you are communicating these two devices pc and plc we need one uh, communication ports nowadays on our pc we are having usb universal serial bus but our plc is having rs 5 communication port okay so here uh, these two protocols are different again usb and rs 5 so we cannot directly communicate for that we need a converter right so for the, uh, here we are having pc adapter mpi for this conversion okay which is converting your usb to rs 5 protocol then so when we are communicating here we are defining the load addresses for your pc and plc so your pc always takes a node number zero this is a node address right the, node, the purpose of node address is like from there at which point or at which location you want to send data okay so to which device you need to send data just like you're having uh, different phone numbers right to whom you want to call you will have to dial that particular number only i, I cannot dial any number and uh, call to anyone right so here some station number is defined for each module so that we can easily communicate with that particular device okay so that's the purpose we are using this node addresses here the pc2 plc so plcs are taking node number two by default in <coughs> mpi okay this is a uh, like a, a first plc okay when you are communicating with pc here okay that will take node number two always okay what about one and two uh, sorry one and remember that addresses you can ex extend this through this coffee bus connector uh, single side connector or two side connector whatever you need you can use and you can connect on this uh, node number two here on this node and you can extend this cable you can use the same coffee bus cable for this communication okay so here <clears throat> this cable is like a uh, a nine pin connector to usb which is connected through this mpi adapter okay mpi or uh, mpi pc adapter between pc and this adapter from this end again there is a nine pin connector to a nine pin connector here which is connected on the plc okay so we need a that uh, two side connector profit bus connector so our uh, one end is connected here and on that back side we are connecting this mpi adapter okay this connector from there uh, below okay you can take one uh, cable or reverse cable from this end and you can extend it on this other end you can connect one more connector here and you can add one more plc you can add a plc at node number one or you can add a hmi okay not only plc's you can extend HMI also. Okay, up to node number 31. So node number 0 to node number 31, you can configure this many devices on MPI. Now, so first point here is about MPI. It is a Siemens proprietary product. Okay, you must remember this that it is a Siemens proprietary product. That means it supports only Siemens make PLCs and HMIs. It supports only Siemens make PLCs and HMIs. Okay, no third party or no uh, <coughs> remote iOS, no uh, VFDC. Okay, on this MPI. If you are doing this MPI communication, we cannot connect remote iOS, VFDs, or any third party module. Only Siemens PLCs and HMIs you can configure as masters. All the controllers. Okay, or HMIs we are adding on this. Okay, or not only this HMI, even we can say SCADA also we can add. Okay, so <clears throat> that is also acting as a master. Okay, then the electrical interface is RS405, means the electrical interface that is your cable type we are using this protocol we are using this RS485. Okay. 
then we have a baud rate here for MPI. Okay. It's starting from 9.6 kbps minimum. Okay. Kilo bits per second. Okay. 19.2 kbps, 38.4 kbps like this. It goes up to 187.5 kbps maximum for S7300 CPUs. Whereas it can go maximum up to 1.5 mbps maximum for S7400 CPUs. Okay, so here <clears throat> there is a difference here between 300 and 400 CPU communication. Okay, <clears throat> because in 300 series it is a serial communication, whereas in 400 it is a parallel communication. Okay, so the speed the data transfer speed will be more than S7400 CPUs. That is about the MPI. So next we come with the profit bus. It is uh, one of the main protocol and uh, mostly used protocol in the field, right? Coffee bus. We have coffee bus stands for process field bus. PR means process, F I means field, B means bus. Okay, bus means traveling, right? So your data is traveling through the Okay, so that's why we mentioned as a bus here, a communication cable. It supports up to 127 nodes or station starting from 0 to 126. Okay, here you can see one example from PC to PMC, same like we are using PC adapter MPI for communication for transferring data, right? <clears throat> okay, and here it is taking node number 0. And number two. Then, so this is this MPI port. Okay, this port. Okay, this CPU, as you can see, uh, there is having two ports here. One is for MPI communication, one other one is for profit bus communication. And there are two Ethernet ports here again for profit net communication, for Ethernet communication also. So here, I'm configuring only MPI on the first. Port only for MPI. The second one is for Profit Bus. Okay. Profit Bus DP. <clears throat> DP stands for Decentralized Reference. <clears throat> so here, on this, we can <clears throat> use this connector, Profit Bus connector. From there, on the second port, from there, we are extending one cable, Profit Bus cable. On this, we are adding some remote IOs. At node number one, not only one, you can use three or any number, okay? But we need to give some different number here. It should not, it should not be same, okay? So whenever you are assigning this number on this remote I use, okay? Uh, in software, right? So once you have selected this node number, it will not display for the another module, okay? So that means it is only used or consumed. Now, like you can add some VFDs, you can add some PLCs also, you can add some HMI, <clears throat> different modules or stations or nodes you can share up to 126. Okay. But whatever the modules you add on this DP port acts as slave. That means the main PLC is a master, and other modules are known as which are the module are adding on this profit bus are known as slaves. So this is called master slave configuration. Okay, this is called master slave configuration. Now here you call about profit bus. It is an open bus protocol. Open bus protocol means it supports all third party modules okay suppose it's open okay for any module or any configuration so suppose remote time use we have these plcs hmis and any third party modules as slave then there are also the electrical interfaces similar to mpi that is rs 5 
earlier this profit was loss uh, profitary to Siemens only, but later on <coughs> uh, they are made it open to they collaborated with uh, other brands and they made this protocol open so that uh, they can interface uh, <coughs> their models with any third party devices. Okay. Now the board rates again. 9.6 kb yes for up to one kilometer distance it can travel with this speed okay so the maximum speed will be 12 mbps up to 100 meters only up to 100 meters the maximum speed can be 12 mbps okay on profit bus as the distance increases the data transfer speed decreases so up to one kilometer the speed of data transfer is decreased to 9.6 kbps. Okay. Now, <clears throat> next, as we said, we are having uh, <clears throat> up to 126 nodes. Okay. And your data can travel up to 1 kilometer here. Suppose if I want to <clears throat> extend the distance more than 1 kilometer. Okay, on this profit bus, we can extend the distance uh, up to 9 to 10 kilometers also. Okay, using repeaters. So, here we are having different types of repeaters here for uh, signal extension for communication purpose. Okay, long distance communication. So, how it can be connected? So, from PLC at DP port, we are using one profit bus connector. From there, we are having node number two, right? From there, we take one cable, profit bus cable, right? On this, we are adding some remote IOS <clears throat> on a different node number up to say <clears throat> node number 31. So, zero is for your PC. Then we are continuing to 1, 3, up to 31. So total 32 nodes, okay? Say up to within 1 kilometer of distance, okay? You can connect up to 31 nodes, okay? It's not necessary that you, you should connect only 31 nodes in 1 kilometer. You can extend more than that also. You can connect within 1 kilometer. You can connect more than 32 nodes also. But here for 1 kilometer, Okay, <clears throat> not only 31, 32 nodes, you can add extend more nodes. Okay, if it is required, if your uh, models are nodes or uh, say stations are more. Okay, so this is called one segment. Group of these 32 nodes is called one segment. That segment number is known as say, zero. So when you extend more nodes after 31, okay, you must connect one repeater. So this repeater can be within one kilometer also. Okay, not uh, only after one kilometer. Within one kilometer also can connect, but it should be after 31 minutes. Okay, then from this repeater again, we are extending the distance. Right, one other 32 nodes. So like 33, 34, like this, it will continuously go down. So another repeater example. Okay, so we can add more. Modules here <clears throat> on this network up to 136. So, this another segment 32 to 63, another segment. Okay, so segment 0, segment 1, so segment 2, 3. Okay, <clears throat> so like this, you are adding up your segments. Okay. So how many modules are configuring depending on that you are adding this segments okay so but it should be 32 nodes okay as one segment now so this is about the repeater here now repeaters are used to extend our distance to connect remote ios vfds PLCs, etc as slaves for longer distances next point can be extended up to nine kilometers, and after one kilometer, one repeater must be connected. Okay, if you are extending after one kilometer, you want to extend, there should be one repeater. 
Okay, so you can extend the signal for another one kilometer. Okay, <clears throat> for starting 100 meters, it will be 12 Mbps speed you can set. No, it is not necessary after one kilometer only. That's what we are discussing in the previous slide. Okay, and uh, group of participants are also called as segments. <clears throat> Okay, that is uh, called as segment zero, one, two, three, like this. Okay. Next. We have different networking and communication options in the industry, right? So this is divided into two types. One is uh, input output communication and data communication. For input output communication, we're having High communication speed, determinable state, and small volume of data. So this is like a highest communication speed, like 12 Mbps. Okay, just now we have discussed about remote IOS VFDs. Okay, for this, we are using this uh, highest speed. Okay, and your data transfer, the, the data transfer will be faster. And determinable at some at the defined location or the node which is transferring the data. And small small amount of uh, volume of data is transferred. Okay. <clears throat> Whereas in data communication is like uh, if you are communicating PLC and PLC, means PLC to PLC communication. And that is master master configuration or you are in redundant configuration where you, are, you have to transfer huge amount of data or huge volume of data at a time. Okay. So here this is a non-time critical, whereas for IOS, it is a time critical. Okay, so there are different types of communication we are using here in the industry. So for uh, input output communication, we are using different types of copy bus here. Uh, one, one is copy bus DP. The DP stands for decentralized peripheral. Decentralized and centralized. Centralized means local. Decentralized means remote. Okay, decentralized means remote. Remote means at long distance, right? So a peripheral means a device or a modules. So you are all IO modules and uh, <coughs> VFDs, CPUs, uh, all these are known as peripherals, okay? Which can be connected at long distance, right? So DP stands for decentralized peripheral. For example, remote IOs, VFDs, okay? That can be configured on the bus DP. There's one more configuration called Profibus PA. PA stands for Process Automation. So this is used for communication with smart devices like uh, flow transmitters, control valves, okay, pressure transmitters, etc. at long distance. In hazardous uh, areas where you cannot uh, <coughs> Uh, means you uh, means a safety areas, right? There is small spark, but that also is also dangerous, right? So to avoid that, uh, we are using the Octavius PA for the safety of those instruments. Okay. So we are having a converter, one more converter called DP to PA converter. Okay, or it is also known as a coupler. Okay, DP PA coupler. Okay, which is converting data from uh, DP to PA, which is transferred uh, transfer to the flow transmitter, the control valves, which are connected on the hazardous zone, okay, area. Okay, so that way you are using this profibus PA. And on this profibus PA, just like we are uh, even connecting this uh, actuators, I think you have heard about ASI, ASI communication, that is your actuator sensor interface. Also known as uh, stands for actuator sensor interface. So for connecting media switches, contactors, solar lines, etc. at long distance. Okay, on profitable speed. So this is about uh, IO communication, whereas for data communication or uh, master master configuration, remote IO, um, sorry, uh, redundancy configuration. Okay, we are using this type of protocols that is. Point to point communication, MPA communication, top bus communication, okay, and just a little net communication. This point to point means only two nodes, right? 
only two modules will be communicative at a time. Okay, so that was also previous protocol. Okay, in Siemens, but nowadays is not uh, <coughs> used, right? Not much use. Uh, for S7200 series, okay. Uh, there was adapt there's adapter with that we are using this protocol communication. It is about a different uh, communication options available. Then <clears throat> next uh, protocol is Profinet. Profinet also stands for PN. If you expand this. Stands for process field network. Within this, it supports 1024 nodes or stations using TCP IP addresses for each model. So there should be a unique IP address, you know, in the uh, internet protocol, right? Or Ethernet addresses are there. Right? Starting from 192.168.0.1.2.3 like that. Okay. So not only that. Uh, different uh, brands are having their own IP addresses uh, starting uh, <coughs> formats okay, that you can use. So here, we're using this uh, RJ45 connector stores, right, for communication here. This is an example I'm showing you. And here are some switches. Or you can say uh, extension modules. You can extend the distance or multiple devices if you want to configure on a single network. For that, you can use this switch. Okay, you can see there are many internet uh, ports are there on the switch. It's also known as scalens. Okay, scalen switch. Mm -hmm. So multiple cables you can configure on this. Uh, means uh, multiple modules you can add on this. Okay. And uh, RJ45. The maximum border here, we are using this 100 MBPS. Okay. And you can have a longer distance communication here. And uh, here we are using fiber optics also with this Ethernet. Uh, on this uh, models, you can also find OLM option. Okay. For fiber optic ports are also available on some scanless models. So that we can use uh, this signal. We can go up to like 15 kilometers from one OLM to another OLM module. Okay, OLM stands for object, object link embedded. Okay, object, sorry, object uh, link module. Okay, so from one end to another end, up to 15 kilometers. Like that, we can have one more OLM at other 15 kilometer distance. So that way we can extend more than 20 to 30 kilometers you can extend okay <clears throat> and the many advantages here right? <clears throat> compared to the other protocols there is uh, some overview about the protocols we are having in the suit if you like this video and my explanations please like and share with uh, your friends you are, uh, are interested to learn this. Okay. Thank you very much.